Hello! <laughs> Blake's an asshole! You get all that? Um, yeah, I can. Tomorrow night we're going to announce immediately who America saved, which is three people. Two will immediately go home, home, but they don't really go home. They'll be part of what will then be nine, and all nine will have their 90-second instant one last performance. And then America will instantly save one of them, and that'll be the fourth wild card finalist. So by tomorrow night, we'll have our four, or by Wednesday when we get to the voting, we'll have our, uh, our four. Honestly, I mean, we've tweaked the format of this show since it started for one reason, including the steals during the, uh, uh, the battle rounds. Because the influx of talent came through so much, we started to get so much of the uh, Austin, Memphis, uh, Dallas, LA, New York, a lot of the real singer-songwriters who never would have, you know, stood in line at a Home Depot for eight hours, you know, you know, on one of these other types of shows. The talent was so great and it was walking out the door. And so we needed to figure out a way to kind of keep people around. And this is an extension of that. I mean, there was, uh, it's part of the idea of a second chance, you know. Who wouldn't want to see, you know, we look at, we take a lot of what we do also from sports. Uh, and the NFL does such a great job, I think, of that too. You know, it's fun to watch a wild card team get a chance and then come back. It's a David and Goliath scenario. And who wouldn't want to see, I'm making this up, Sugar Jones from Team Pharrell come back and compete against Matt McAndrew or any of these other front runners? I mean, that would make for a great final in the same way that, you know, the Seattle Seahawks would be great watching them play the great Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos. So, you know, there's a lot of that thought process that goes into what we do on the show. No, I mean, I would tell you honestly if I thought there was somebody. No, they all seem to really want to be here. And I think you saw that tonight. I mean, two performances each, coach pick, I mean, every song. And we don't like to go on air saying, that was amazing, that was amazing. We talk about it as producers, we talk about it. We need to be honest, we want to be constructive. If somebody was off the mark, I love Christina Aguilera for that. I mean, she's somebody in our on our panel that I think is great. We'll say like, you know what? I love you. You're talented. That was not the song for you. And I miss a little bit of that constructive criticism. Uh, but with this five, that is hard to find. I think the music fans of the show are going to like it. And I know the coaches love it because it's a, you know, it's a part of the process of what the show's about now. Um, it's, you know, if it's, a, if it's a hit song, it'll be great, you know? Um, but it's no different. You know, we, uh, Matt saying Ed Sheeran, Let It Rain Tonight, which is such an obscure song for, for any critical mass viewer, you know, for anybody on the inside, knowing that was on the, you know, uh, the se you know, one of the ending scenes from Sons of Anarchy, a TV show, which Adam likes, and it's a great Ed Sheeran song, and it was highlighted. I mean, look at Damien Rice. The other, when we do obscure and we do it well, it pays dividends. I think the network might have been a little nervous about Matt singing the Damien Rice song at the end of the show because you have 12, 15 million people watching. You don't, familiarity is also important. It's a delicate balance. That song was number two on iTunes. So when it's done right and they knock it out of the park, it, people appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.